Please join me in our call to worship. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has gained his salvation now and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to Israel. Salvation of God. Let us join together in prayer. God of light, you brought hope to the world and joy to our lives. Yet darkness hovers in many corners and clings to many minds. Possessions grip, hold, and pile up so as to block simple views of the light. Anger and violence overpower gentle words and knock out the light for others. Despair casts a shadow of doubt on any hope for light. God of light, open our eyes, clear our minds, and soften our hearts so that we may walk as children of light and behold the pink of a sunrise and the hue of another's eyes. Shine on our mists again and again. This we ask in the name of your Son, our Savior and Lord, even Christ himself. Amen. Yes, Lord, you are our hope and our light. You are our hope and our light because in Christ we have found peace. Peace with you, our God. Because of the forgiveness of sin, the cleansing of all unrighteousness, we now have peace with you. Truly, Lord, in Christ we have all that we need. And so, Father, in the name of Christ, we thank you. Amen. A few years ago, actually more years than I really want to remember, our youngest daughter, Danielle, was ready eager, anxious to buy a car. And she found the one that she wanted, a VW Bug. She had driven by it, saw the for sale sign, called about it, and she was hot and ready to go look at it. But I was tied up at church and couldn't go with her. But our son-in-law, I don't know whether they were married at the time, but Kara's husband, Tyler, was there. And so I said, Tyler, you and Kara go with Danielle and look at this car. Go check it out. So they went and checked out this VW Bug and came back and Danielle had bought it. So, okay, how to check out? How are the tires? Tyler just kind of looked at me. There are four of them. <laughs> well, what was the tread like? I don't know. I didn't really look at it. Well, what about the exhaust? Was it clear? Was it? I don't know. Well, what about the engine? Was it clean? When you checked the oil, was I didn't even pop the hood. Come to find out. I mean, I just assumed Tyler was a guy. Car guy, right? No. Tyler didn't have a clue about cars. 
later when he, I was going to change Kara's oil, oil for her, she said, and Tyler said, Jim, can you show me how to change the oil? So I showed him, and then I, when I figured out this guy doesn't have a clue, I said, you know, Tyler, I use a special kind of oil, and I enjoy doing this. I enjoy working on cars, and because they use special oil, it saves me a lot of money. Just take it someplace on a regular basis. I assumed that Tyler was a car guy. I also have, I assume that he knew something about home maintenance. His dad bought a log cabin that was partially under construction, bought it at his sheriff's office, finished the construction. I assume that his dad finished the project. Later, I found out that his dad hired the project. His dad didn't have a clue either. Tyler at least now knows about roofing. <clears throat> but you know what happens when you assume? I'm not gonna fill it out for you, but see, it's not a good thing. Tyler probably should have known cars and he probably should have known a house. I think of uh, Sergeant um, Schultz on Hogan's Heroes. I know nothing. <laughs> but I, you know, when it, when it comes to you all, I don't want to assume anything. So this morning, I'm going to go back to the basics. There are four types of people in the world, and that's it. There are only four types of people. And you, if you're a people, and I'm assuming that you are, if you're an alien or a zombie, I don't want to hear about it. But you're in one of these four categories. The first category are those that are true Christ followers. You are a believer in Jesus Christ, and you have confidence that you know Christ. You have confidence, assurance that you have a ticket to heaven. There's no ifs, ands, buts about it. You have a, an assurance that because of God's grace, because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross, you have a reservation with your name on it, guaranteed in heaven. Then there's another category of people that, oh, they think that they are a Christian, but in reality, they're not. According to statistics, 85% of Americans believe that they're a Christian. However, based on surveys and questionnaires, only 35% of Americans actually profess to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, if my math is correct, the difference between the 85% who believe that they're a Christian and the 35% who actually profess to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, the difference is 50%. So that means that there are 50% of the people that believe that they're a Christian, but they really don't have a relationship with Christ. And those people are like people sitting in an airport waiting room. And if you've been watching the news, there are a lot of people right now that are sitting at airport waiting rooms. But these are people that are sitting in an airport waiting room and they are holding a ticket, a ticket that they bought on eBay. 
And they think that ticket is going to get them on board a plane. And they believe that that ticket is going to get them to their des destination. But there's only one problem with that ticket. It's bogus. When they take that ticket to the counter and when they take that ticket and present it to the ticket agent, they're going to discover that it's not real. And that ticket isn't going to get them on the board the plane. And that ticket isn't going to get, get them to that destination because it's not real. The problem is they don't have a real ticket to ride. Oh, they are holding a ticket. They have confidence in that ticket. The only problem is it's a false assurance. And when they go to get on board, they're gonna find out that they are in a heap load of trouble. There's a third group of people and those people, they are true Christ followers. They do have a relationship with Jesus Christ. They do have a ticket to ride. They do have a place reserved for them in heaven. The only problem is they don't have the peace of God. They're constantly worried about the relationship with God. They are overwhelmed with fear. They're always wondering. They're always troubled. They don't have the assurance that God wants them to have. You know, the, the Apostle John, in addition to the gospel that he wrote, he also wrote three, the letters. In the gospel he wrote, these things are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. And in the first of his letters, he wrote, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. So that you may know, no ifs, ands, buts, doubts, questions about it, but so that you may know with a confidence, with an assurance that you have eternal life. See, God doesn't want us to go through life always questioning, always doubting, always being afraid whether our tick is, is real or not. But some people, they're always afraid. Do I have a real ticket? Then there's a the fourth group of people. And that fourth group of people, they, they know they don't have a ticket. They know that they don't have a relationship with God. They don't have any doubts. They don't have any questions. They know that they know that they don't know God. Those are the only four types of people in the world. Each and every one of us, we are somewhere on that spectrum. We are either a Christ follower and we know that we know that we know that we have that assurance. We know that we have a relationship with Christ and that we have a ticket to heaven. Or we're one of those that we believe that we have are a Christian, but in reality, we're not. Or we're a Christian, but we're always wondering. We're always afraid. Am I really? Maybe I'm not. We don't have a peace with God. Or, hey, I know that I'm not a Christian and it really doesn't bother me. The question is, where are you? on that spectrum. Which one of the four best describes you? Because I want you to know where you are. Because 
the question of eternity is the most important question that we have to answer in our entire life. The Bible says there are only two options for eternity, heaven or hell, that's it. There aren't any other options. It's either heaven or hell. Heaven, the best way to describe heaven is being in the presence of God. That's it. And that's really all we need. Being in the presence of God, reunited with all our loved ones who have gone before. That's the ultimate joy, the ultimate reward. Hell is just the opposite. You know, we, we try to picture hell as all these flames, all this punishment. Do you know what the ultimate punishment is? Being separated from God for all eternity. That's the punishment, knowing that we are missing being in the presence of God. It's not being punished by flames. It's not being punished by the cracking of whips or manual labor or anything like that. It's just knowing that, oh man, I could have been in the presence of the loving, merciful, gracious Heavenly Father, and I missed it. That's hell. And, you know, the bottom line is once we determine where we're going to spend eternity, that really settles so much. And if we haven't settled that issue, I honestly don't know how a person goes through life. See, here's the problem. We live in an existential world. Do you know what existentialism means? It basically means you exist for the moment. Here and now, right here, right now. Have you, have you caught on to how advertising works? Buy now, pay later. No payments for 90 days. No payments till next year. Do you know how an existentialist hears that? No payments. Because 90 days doesn't come. Next year doesn't come because I'm living for the moment. I'm living right here, right now. 90 days. Oh, that's way down the road. Next year. Oh, my goodness. That's way down the road. That's how advertising works. Because all you hear is, no payments. I can own that car and I never have to pay for it. But what's reality? Reality is payments will come. See, a lot of people don't think about eternity. Other people die, I'm not gonna die. Other people have to think about eternity. I don't have to think about eternity, but the reality is Eternity is going to come for all of us. As my dad used to say, people are dying today that never died before. You know, at the funeral luncheon yesterday, I was talking with some of the family and someone said, you know, time just seems to be going by so fast nowadays. Have you noticed that? And the older you get, it seems like the faster time goes by. And all of you are getting older. I'm not, it's, it's miraculous. I haven't aged a day since I turned 29. But we all are gonna face eternity. And so we need to deal with that issue. Life, life is relatively short, but eternity is eternal. 
And once we settle the issue of eternity, it really settles a lot of life's issues. But a lot of people, a lot of people, as I said, 50, 85% of Americans believe that they're a Christian, but only 35% of Americans actually have a personal relationship with Christ. So there are a lot of people out there that have a false sense of security. Well, because I'm a good person. God has to accept me. God has to give me a ticket to ride because I'm a good person. Have you ever noticed when people say that they're a good person, who do they compare themselves to? to? They always compare themselves to somebody that is worse than they are. I'm a good person compared to Adolf Hitler. I mean, only Mussolini looks bad compared to Hitler. Have you ever noticed that nobody ever says, I'm a good person compared to Mother Teresa? If you're gonna compare yourself, uh, there's only one standard. Do you know who, if, if you wanna try to get into heaven by comparison, you only have one standard. That is the holy, perfect son of God. If you look good compared to Jesus Christ, you might have a shot at heaven. But I'll tell you this, compared to Christ, we all look like filthy rags. I don't care how good you are. You are not good enough. Because the Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. I studied Greek for two years. And let me tell you what all means in the Greek. All means all. It's that simple. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. None are righteous. Not me, not you, not any of us. None of us are good enough. Well, yeah, but um, I believe in God. The Bible says the demons believe in God and tremble. They're not getting to heaven. It's not enough. Well, yeah, but I was baptized. I went through confirmation class. That's still not enough. Only when you have that relationship with Jesus Christ. Christ said, by their fruit, you shall know them. So the reality is, what's your fruit? Has Christ made a difference in your life? Ephesians 2 put it this way. Whereas you used to feel as though God was far off, now you feel as though he is near. Whereas you used to feel as though you were a stranger to God, now you sense that he is that you are his child. Whereas you used to feel like an alien, now you feel like a citizen of his kingdom. You feel different and you see things differently. I remember when I was a kid and I came to believe in Christ and I would do something wrong, sin. Can you imagine that? I, I know it's hard, isn't it? But it would tear me up inside because I thought, how can I be a Christian and do something wrong? It tore me up and I, I'd think, I can't be a Christian because if I was a Christian, I wouldn't sin. And then I realized, yeah, I would because I'm not perfect. I know that really, you find a hard time believing them. Yeah, I know. But you see, 
what I came to realize is it was because I was a Christian that sin did bother me. It's when sin doesn't bother us that that should bother us. But when we sin and it bothers us, that's the conviction of the Holy Spirit. That's when we know that, hey, I do have a relationship with God because God is holy and God wants us to be holy. And when we commit sin and it bothers us, that's God saying, hey, 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 hey. Don't go that way. Come back. Come back to me. If we sin and it doesn't bother, sin doesn't bother the world because the world says, hey, anything goes. It's okay. But to one of God's children, we know that it's wrong. And when we commit sin, God says, come back. Ask for forgiveness and I'll forgive and I'll restore that relationship. Second Corinthians 5, 17 says, if anyone be in Christ, they are a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. See, when we are truly a child of God, everything changes. What's your fruit like? Is your life different? One of my favorite sayings to an upside down world, a right side up man looks upside down. Are you different from the world? Then guess what? You've got a ticket to ride. And God wants you to know that you know that you know. And God wants you to have his peace. If you're not sure about your ticket, then it's come time to come to know Christ as your savior and say, God, I want to know what John says by believing in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you that we may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, we may have life in his name. And we thank you, Lord, that you have written these things to those of us that believe in the name of the Son of God so that we may know we have eternal life. You want us to have that peace. You don't want us to question, to be anxious. Give us that peace, Lord, that perfect peace. This we ask in the name of Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. <clears throat> daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen and now may the god of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with his hope by the power of his Holy Spirit, now and always. Amen. Mm -hmm.